Finally, we're going to end on the section that will ruin your ability to do all of the other sections correctly once you learn how to do this. So we're going to be very careful as we learn this to make sure we understand why it only works in these specific situations. What we're dealing with, these rational equations here, we have something new. We have an equal sign in the problem. None of the other sections have had an equal sign. It's always been an expression, add two things and simplify that answer, or multiply two things, or divide, subtract, and so forth, or just plain old simplify. Now we have an equation. Now we can actually get an answer for what x is. And as a result, we can do some things that we didn't do before, such as get rid of denominators of fractions. You have to make sure that you see that equal sign before you start doing these things. If you don't see the equal sign, if you're just dealing with an expression, you can't just throw out your denominator or have things cancel or try things like cross multiplying, which uh, we're actually going to avoid, but is a technique that some people can use in certain types of problems. So as we look at this problem here, I see a fraction on one side equal to a fraction on the other side. First thing I want to do is get myself a common denominator. And when I look at 7 and 4, I know that they both go into the number that they multiply to, which is 28. And so the way that I can form 28 is by multiplying this one by 4 on top and bottom, and this one by 7 on top and bottom. So now I have 4 times 7 in both my denominators, 28 for both my denominators. And I'm going to rewrite this as, let's distribute this, 4x plus 4 over 28 equals 7x over 28. Here's where the magic comes in. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equal sign. So we're not just multiplying top to bottom by clever forms of 1 now. Now we're going to take advantage of the fact that since we have an equal sign, we can do things on both sides of it. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 28. And that is going to magically make our denominators both disappear, leaving us with 4x plus 4 equals 7x. Now from here, we have a nice easy algebra problem. We subtract 4x from both sides, leaving us with 4 equals 3x and we can divide both sides by 3 so that x when left alone is equal to 4 thirds. So x equals 4 thirds is the answer to that equation. Scroll down and try something a little bit trickier here. We have number 7, 4 over k plus 4 equals 9 over k plus 6. We need a common denominator before we can uh, abandon uh, the denominator, before we can multiply through to get rid of it. Since k plus 4 and k plus 6 are completely different groups, nothing factors out of them that's in common. I'm going to wrap them up, and we're going to multiply both uh, fractions by the other person's denominator, by the other side's denominator. And actually, as a technique for getting common denominators when working with this, multiplying by multiplying all the possible denominators you have together will always get you a common denominator. Not necessarily the least common denominator, but it will get you something you can work with. And it's sometimes easier to reduce later. Uh, so that's not a bad, bad thing. So this is the denominator I want, k plus 6 times k plus 4. Of course, I know that I can't just do that uh, to the bottom alone. I need to do it to the top and to the bottom, so let's do that. I'm going to distribute my numerators all the way across, so I end up with 4k plus 24 over all of that stuff, and I'm going to write it kind of lazily here, equals 9k plus 36 over all of that stuff, the k plus 6 times k plus 4. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by all of that stuff because we have an equal sign, the k plus 6 times k plus 4. And that is going to end up canceling top to bottom, 
leaving us with 4k plus 24 equals 9k plus 36. So now that we've got it down to that, I can subtract the 4k from both sides. I can then subtract 36 from both sides so I get my k's alone. And that goes away. These go away here. I'm left with 5k is equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by 5. And I get negative 5 twelfths, or negative 12 fifths, as my answer for k. I'll have a new video for the problems on the bottom.